I just about can't believe it, but we made it to the boat show just in time. And apparently there's some like record flooding happening here in Annapolis. When you're working on a boat, if you can see it, then you can only touch it with one hand. And if you can touch it with two hands, then you can't see it. Oh, you mother Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, oh. Good day, mistress. I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. And this is Captain Oso, the little dude. Seven years ago, we bought a super neglected, really small sailboat that we called Atticus with the dream of seeing the world. Over the next seven years, we spent a lot of time fixing up Atticus. But we also did boat work for money in Mexico, <laughs> traded lobster for rum in Cuba, and lived off grid in Panama during the pandemic. Recently, we upgraded to our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, and are now sailing from Maine down to the Annapolis Sailboat Show in Maryland. All right, so we're on the home stretch. We have a big barge kind of coming up behind us. We were actually told like in this area to make sure we stay in the channel at night because there's like lobster buoys and stuff outside of it. But the problem with that is if you're in the channel and then a big barge wants to pass you, they don't really have the room. So he just called us on the radio, asked us to kind of go outside the channel for a bit to let him pass us. And Desiree's up forward doing a bow watch. Oh, and Desiree has Oso up there because he doesn't like to be left out when things are happening. We are approaching the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and I am nervous, man, because I just watched a giant cargo ship go under it and it was just like, took up the whole space, you know? All this big traffic has to funnel into this small spot. And so I'm just making sure that there's no boats around. There's nothing on AIS right now. The other problem with these big cargo ships is they come in going so fast. So they could be completely not there one minute and then all of a sudden there's a big ship coming in. seen a prettier skyline. Great, thank you. Coming in a little hot. Okay. We did it, buddy. We did it. We're the proud new owners of a Valiant 42. <laughs> yeah, I just can't wait to like shower and like sleep more than four hours at a time. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be amazing. <gasps> just about can't believe it, but we made it to the boat show just in time. And so we're a little bit tired. <laughs> I feel a little bit sleep deprived, but like super excited by the energy of everyone here, you know? <laughs> You're going in the water, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna feel the energy of yeah. the Annapolis <laughs> Bay here in a second. Cold water, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just mind blowing that like a week ago we were finishing our electrical installation and here we are. We're on our way to the schooner Woodwind to go on a sail with some viewers. Emma, are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boat buying seminar. My name is Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> Every decision when it comes to what boat to choose is a trade-off. It's very rare where there's a good boat and a bad boat. Well, the boat show was awesome. We got to see so many of our amazing viewers and patrons. So thank you guys so much for those of you who showed up to Annapolis to hang out with us. We are actually spending a couple more days at the Port Annapolis Marina because we've got to edit a couple of videos. And apparently there's some like record um, flooding happening here in Annapolis this weekend. So the docks are almost underwater um, and we're just kind of making sure all of our lines are snug and just kind of crossing our fingers that nothing crazy happens. <clears throat> well, it's like eight o'clock and at this point, the docks are completely submerged. The neighbors are just kind of going around, checking on them lines and everything. This is definitely a first for us. <laughs> what do you think, Ben? Yeah. 
it's weird in that the dock is covered with water, but we're fine, you know. There's no electricity at the dock. The tide here is really driven by the wind, and we had a lot of wind today. It made a already like abnormally high tide even worse. But anyway, it's very weird, but I think we're gonna be just fine. All right, so today we have got a boat project that we're gonna be tackling. The sump pump that we have, it's always been very, very loud. You know, you're having like a nice hot shower and it's relaxing, and then the bottom of the shower starts to fill up with water, so you hit this thing to drain it, and it's like <laughs> Well, lately, it stopped working. This is the motor, this is the diaphragm pump, and the motor would just spin this and as that spun, this would move in and out, in and out, in and out. What broke is the connection between that motor that spins and then this little piston here. There could be a way of salvaging this, but like I said, I just don't want to because this thing is just super loud and annoying. So yeah, I'm just gonna remove the old pump and swap it out for this one. Yeah, I can never remember what that saying is, but it's something like when you're working on a boat, if you can see it, then you can only touch it with one hand. And if you can touch it with two hands, then you can't see it. It's like I have to work a little bit and then like let my arm rest because I'm like up in there holding my arm up for long periods of time. Ah, there we go. Ah, okay. The new pump definitely fits in place well. They want the motor to be mounted above the diaphragm pump itself. If you have any sort of a leak happening, water doesn't drip onto the electric part of the pump. If we do that though, it means that the hose that is the outlet for the pump is a little too short right now. Now that hose leads up to a anti-siphon valve and like a loop way up high. I'm just gonna take off the portion of hose that goes up to the anti-siphon valve and just replace it. And one thing that I try to do systematically is I replace these old perforated hose clamps with these non-perforated uh, larger hose clamps. They're the ABA. 316 stainless. So these are less likely to corrode and they're not perforated. Whereas like old school hose clamps, there's an actual perforation there. And so the amount of metal that actually needs to corrode in order for the band to fail is actually kind of a small amount of metal. It's like all the metal on either side of the perforation. And so these things are just a whole lot safer. They're also a whole lot more expensive. So here I was trying to connect the two spade terminals on the electrical wires, but I could only reach the wires with one hand. And so I had a heck of a time trying to connect it. Oh, man. Oh, you mother Then after I installed the first hose, I realized that the direction of the flow of the pump was reversed. <sighs> oh, Jordan, you're such an idiot. It's wrong, though, so. <laughs> it's a lot of noises. Yeah. You want to play with Jordan? Yeah, you feel left out. <laughs> I, know. I know, I know, I know. And it's about time for me to finish up this dang project, so I think I'm good. Let's test it out and see how it does. Okay, cool, that's it. So I gotta pack all this stuff up and take little dude for a walk. All right, 
right, so another little quick project I got going is I'm gonna handle the last two issues that our surveyor found with the boat's electrical system. The first of which is the fact that there was two glass fuse holders right next to the Raycor fuel filter. Both these fuse holders are for the two fuel pumps that we have on the boat. So one is for the uh, diesel engine fuel pump and then the other is for the S-Bar diesel heater. Basically, these glass fuse holders are totally exposed. So there's a potential that it could cause a fire. Instead of covering these glass fuse holders, I'm actually just gonna replace them with an ATC ATO blade type fuse holder. With the blade fuses, it's a lot easier to pull them when they blow. Whereas with the glass fuses, they can kind of shatter. Oh, that's it. So those are the major issues found at the survey all finished. That should make our insurance company very happy. <laughs> Well, another reason we stuck around Annapolis for a little bit longer is because we've got an appointment with the Pacific Seacraft factory to kind of approve some design features of our new Solar Arch, uh, Davits, and Bimini Top Array. Um, so we're driving over to uh, Washington, North Carolina right now, and we're really excited to check out the factory. Yeah, one of the nice things about working with Pacific Seacraft, they can actually build the whole Solar Arch and Bimini without Atticus 2 actually being here. So that by the time we do get down here with Atticus 2, we can just, you know, install it and we're, we'll be ready to go. All right, so we are here at Pacific Seacraft in Washington, North Carolina. We've got Steve, you're the president. Is that right? Some days. Janitor of the day. Yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so president slash head of sanitation. And then Mike, you wear a lot of hats here too. Mainly fabricated. Mainly fabricated. Yeah. So this is basically a Pacific Seacraft 40 transom that they're building the stern rail and Bimini solar arch structure onto, which is really cool. By doing this with a full replacement wraparound stern rail, you know, you're not having to make any of the compromises that you would make with an add-on with an add-on arch. Mm -hmm. And plus, it's just it's aesthetically cleaner mm -hmm. since it's all integrated uh, and stronger. Stand, stand up there. So that yes, yeah, so that that head height is flatter. Yeah, so the top mm -hmm. of your head is probably about where that mm -hmm. probably about where the top of that arch. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Would it make sense to have a single tube coming aft? and then that could be our stern light. I think I just drew yeah. a penis on your board, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the mold shop, and so this is the whole mold that Atticus uh, was, was born from. Cool. That's so cool. They basically have like a opening in the mold where the skeg goes. And so they build a skeg, put it down on the bottom of the mold, and then they're able to, as they're glassing up and laying up the hull, they have that glass go down into the inside of the skeg. It's mm -hmm. literally integrated into the, the layup, you know? Most of our interior components on the classic line mm -hmm. boats are built from patterns. So, so over here, each of these pallets of plywood patterns that you see represents a different boat model. And it's everything from bulkheads to Corian countertops. Pretty much everything is done by is done by patterns. That's so cool. cool. All right, so we are going to get to explore Annapolis today. Yeah, it'll be fun to have a tour guide to ask questions to. Jordan's always the <laughs> the one in the crowd who's asking like question after question after the annoying question. guy <laughs> yeah i'm the guy that turns the 90 minute tour into to the like, like three, three hour tour yeah it's like dude i got a family i gotta go home i'm like one more question all right so this looks like mistress may she's gonna give mistress us a tour mary, today my dear. mistress mary i'm Indeed. sorry nice to meet you uh oh. good day mistress i'm just worried about what you are wearing yeah. mistress where are your petticoats 
I think I lost them. <laughs> you you must come from such a poor family to be sent out like that. I be Mistress Mary. Nice to meet and you. And I am a dentured servant here in Annapolis. I work for me mistress. And she sent me out. She said you wanted to chat about the comings and goings of the city. Well, I'm probably about the expert in that. I came here around the 1750s. And if we could, on my time, look out there, you are definitely going to see the Royal Navy. Hmm. 100%. Now, they're supposed to be trolling about and trying to keep us safe. But what they're really trying to do is stopping the smugglers. Mm. And I can tell you they're not winning. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we had the smugglers very well organized. And then we had a lot of local pirates. And they were the broker between the smugglers and the actual merchants here who really want the goods from other parts of the world. And what kind of goods were those at the time? Indeed. Well, they would be the exotic goods. They might have even come as far as China, the blue and whites, blue and white porcelain for the hoi polloi, the upper class, fabrics and silks. They certainly would have wanted teas mm. and certain kinds of fish, etc., that would have been preserved that they couldn't have here. Luxurious things that would all be on board those foreign ships that had not paid the taxes to Great Britain because Great Britain was very keen on the taxes. Mm -hmm. This was then the area that was known as the Carpenter's Lot. This was the maritime boat builders here. Hmm. We then, on average, built one to two ships a year. And then slowly, a gentleman called William Fells over in 1726 purchased a point of land in Baltimore, to be Baltimore, called Fells Point. And then he created an enormous shipbuilding industry that lasted for decades. And they probably built 600 ships of various types there. And we could not compete eventually. What was it that sort of led to Baltimore becoming more of a hub for everything. Oh, bigger, bigger. You see, gotcha. they had the space, they had deeper ports. We struggled every year to dredge the city mm -hmm. dock about 50 feet. Where Baltimore is now, they didn't have as much of that problem. It was they had so a, deep. Yeah. It was so deep. It still is so deep. I want you, young lady, uh -huh. to peek through here and can you make out the size of that barrel? Oh, that looks like you can fit ten, five, ten, ten people. Yeah. <laughs> it's that big. That is called a hogshead. A large barrel would have been on your ship. You'd I'd say you'd gone over to your mother country. And let's say someone had the misfortune of dying, but at the wrong side of the pond. So you have to have a proper burial. It's required. Yeah. So they would put you in a hogshead and they would fill you up with any kind of alcohol that they could get. Whoa. Wow. And, they, and maybe one or two others had passed, so you'd all bob in there together, nobody minded. And you would have a three-month journey in your alcohol, getting marinated and pickled. Oh, gross. Till you ride, finally <laughs> arrive here at the dock for your oh, family to, hopefully they can identify you by them, and you go and have a proper burial. But we're the colonies and we like, mm, we like exotic things and we're oh, not going to no. waste anything. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's illegal to, to, to acquire it because the government says we have to tax everything. Well, we do acquire it. In fact, in the dead of night, some big strong men and a, and a cart would come very quietly in the night. They'd even tie rags round the wheels not to make a rumble. <laughs> Quietly, and maybe in the garden where it would be pitch black, they would hide the hogshead full of full-bodied, literally, Ugh. red or whatever alcohol. Oh, delicious. And we would have a password that we all knew called a Henry. You would literally go to your landlord and discreetly say, is there a Henry? Don't make an advertisement, but you get lashes get punished and he would just tell a serving wench with a tankard to go out in the garden and she scoops some in and she would then indeed bring you your drink and you'd pay a penny because that's all you would have i don't know but bud do you think you could drink the no. the human booze i don't know if i could bring myself to do it <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. 
Welcome, we finally come to the State House. In December 23rd, 1783, George Washington came into the old Senate chamber and he stepped down as our general. For nine months, Annapolis was the capital of the brand new country called the United States. Okay, well, thank you so much for the tour, Mistress Mary. Oh, you're more than welcome. And so if you're in Annapolis and you want to meet Mistress Mary and do one of their many awesome tours, definitely check out Watermark Tours on watermarkjourney.com. It's amazing. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. Also, for those of you who were able to make it out to the Annapolis Sailboat Show this year, thank you so, so much for making it such an incredible experience. We had an amazing time getting to meet all of you face to face. Also, getting ready for the Annapolis Boat Show can be a logistical nightmare, but thanks to our on the ground support team, we were able to host a bunch of really fun events. So first and foremost, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Jeff Bach. He was the coordinator of the YouTube tent this year. We also wanted to give a huge thank you to Dan Vermerskirken, who was responsible for making these gorgeous patron-only t-shirts and also the t-shirts that we sold at the YouTube booth. Also, big shout and thank you to the Stevensons who received all of our t-shirts and helped us stay organized. And finally, we wanted to give a ginormous thank you and big virtual hug to Mickey Finn, who was our resident patron-only hangout get-together guru. And Mickey you are amazing. I don't know what we would have done without you. Thank you so much for all of your help. And finally, thank you so much to all of our patrons who make each and every one of these videos possible. We are so grateful for your love, encouragement, and support. So to our first May patrons, thank you so much. Philip Shannon and the Regina family. And to our Bosun level patrons, thank you so much. Mark, Sarah, Ben, and Brooklyn Manfredo. Randy Hussman. Jonathan Hunter Luma. Rob Joyce. Kurt Nielsen. Logan Yuzinski. Peter Elmore. And Robert Kretzmeyer. Moving on to our Yacht Master level patrons, thank you so much. Scott Sanford, Bruce Bremer, Mark Dixon, Peter Thompson, Josh Neal, Jim Kearney, Carlisle Page, and Chuck Robinson. And finally, moving on to our newest Deckhand level patrons, thank you so much. Mike Blonda, Elizabeth Davies, Justin Moore, Bert Widener, Sean Norris, Trevor Daru, Jen Curran, Robert H. Krause, Michael Burnett, Jack Schnur, Boss Matt B., and Sean Harrington. So thank you guys again for your love, support, and encouragement. We will catch you next week.